Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today I'm going to show you my workflow for creating the video version of the Mastering Show podcast. Ian started the Mastering Show podcast about six months ago, and he just did it publishing to SoundCloud and on his website. When he hired me on to do the editing and mixing, I suggested that we put up the show also on YouTube. He wasn't really into the idea, but I showed him a graphic, something like this here essentially the entire video version of his podcast. And he was on board with it because he knew that it looks pretty good and that he knew that I would do all the work. So it's a pretty easy process actually to make a video version of a podcast. If you're an indie musician and you wanna do a streaming version of your album, uh, this is something you can do as well. You just put in the album cover, you put in your artist and album name. The basics can be done mostly with Reaper. So today I'll show you how I make the videos. It starts off in a program called Pixelmator. So this is my image editing program, and this is my template that we're seeing here. So the basic thing that I change for each show is the title, I change the number, and I change the text here. I'm not a graphic designer, so I want to keep this really basic and simple. I grabbed images from Ian's website um, I chose colors that match the colors he already has, and I kept the same font. I used a lot of ruler guides to help with aligning things, and the majority of this template doesn't change between shows. So you can set this up for your own project. It's a pretty simple process. It takes maybe an hour to make up your template, and then two, three minutes to update for each show, if you're doing a lot of different shows. Back to Reaper, here's the layout for the project. A track for the MP3 of the finished podcast. I have a track for the main image, that's this one. And I have a track for the ads. So Ian has a couple different plugins, Dynameter and Perception. So after five minutes of the show, it goes into an ad for Ian's plugins. Uh, those last for five minutes, then it goes back to the main graphic and it just repeats. These images fade in, and for that, I'm using a fade on the actual images here, along with the video processor plugin set to the item fades effect video preset. So I have one of these on this track and on this other track. There are no other plugins in this project because the audio is already mastered. Let's go through the process of doing a new episode. So I'm gonna grab my episode 11 here, bring this in. I am working on a frame grid. To set up your grid on frames, you go to your snap and grid settings, set it to frames. And in your project settings for video, I have it set to 30 and you set your video size to 1080p or uh, whatever you need. So that goes there. Make a time selection for this item, and then I'm going to create a region. I'm gonna make sure that this region matches the episode number. It's episode 11, so it's going to be region ID number 11. Then I grab my episode 11 image and drag that in. By default, the image that you're going to import will be one second long, so you need to stretch it out to the entire length of your project and use those snap guides to uh, help with that. Right there. As you can see, it's visible here, but if I click anywhere else, it's going to be black. The item has a length of the full show, but it only the first section is actually played. I need to loop this. I'm going to go to item properties, click on loop source, click that, click apply, now we see it. While I have this open, I'm also going to set a fade of 600 milliseconds, both in and out. And you can set this however you like. 500 milliseconds would be 15 frames or half a second. I'm doing just slightly above half a second. So click apply, and now it's beginning, it's going to be black, and fade in. Then I would do the same process for bringing in my Dynameter and my Perception graphics. For this one, I'm just gonna copy what I have before. So I'm gonna Command-Drag, bring it over, 
And I'm going to set my time selection to five minutes because I want these images to repeat every five minutes. I already have these selected, so I can just drag this to the edge. If they were unselected, I would use the ripple edit per track option and drag that over so that they line up. So it looks like I have room for one more here. So every five minutes, four or five minutes, the ads will run until the end of the show. That's pretty much all there is to setting up these shows. Once you create your graphics, which is the longest part of the process, you just drop them in, make sure that they're looping, put in some fades so that they come in nicely from black or, or dissolve in from the previous image. And then you export. I would be using the region render matrix. If you only have the one video that you're exporting in the project, you could set it to master mix and entire project. I have 11 different videos in this project, so I'm going to region render matrix, opening up the render matrix and choosing number 11. I give it a name using my wildcards. It's usually episode number and then the region number to insert the episode number into the file name, and then dash the Mastering Show podcast. My export settings are using the AV Foundation encoder. Uh, this one is Mac only, and it works pretty well. It's what I use for all my videos. 1080p, 30 frames per second, and a high bit rate is what you want. So 4,000 is kind of average. It's a good balance of file size and crispness of details. So like the text, it's not going to be blurry at 4,000. Uh, 7,000 would be even better, but th I think the default setting is something around 2,000 and it looks pretty bad. And the audio codec is AAC, can't be changed. 256 kilobits per second is fine. It's already a lossy source. We, we want kind of a high bit rate because it's, we don't want to lose more detail, uh, but there's only so much we can do. I don't have the original WAV files for a lot of these shows, so I can't uh, do perfect quality. I usually s export several of the videos and actually leave them overnight to run. So you click render and it would do its thing. And that's all there is to it. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you can use these techniques on your own project. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog by becoming a patron on Patreon. Help keep these videos coming with a small monthly donation. Check out reaperblog.net for a lot of tips, tricks, and tutorials, a free mixing course, and so much more.